to the first in a series that I think we're going to call Ask an Unconsultant. Uh, my name is Meg Newhouse, and I'm here with Amir Azerbad, my friend and co-founder and co-partner at Inspirant Group. And today I'm going to ask him some questions about how to prepare for transformation in 2020. I thought as we get started in the new year, it might be fun to think about, to reflect on 2019 and to help our clients and uh, others think about what they should plan for in 2020. I know you've always talked about the idea of this journey. Right. Um, maybe you can explain a little bit about what the journey means for folks going through a transformation. Where do people, you know, when they're thinking about where to start, they have all these projects they want to get started on in 2020. Where would you, where do they even, you know, wrap their arms around these hundred projects? How do they get started? Let's focus on the transformation journey itself. And most companies, the way these conversations usually go is the CEO comes into the CIO's office and says, this technology sucks. We need something new. Right. Let's go. And the CIO typically goes to his or her team and starts asking questions like, we need to fix this. What's the best solution out there? Who do we know in the market? And what that always ends up doing is bringing in the same set of people, the same set of technologies, the same set of conversations that have happened historically. And everyone jumps to, let's invest in a new technology platform. Let's put a product off the shelf and off we go. The short answer, the simple answer to your question is start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. Don't jump to the technology like we said. Don't jump to the people in the process. Don't look at your data. But ultimately, the question here is not what technology ails you or what your people lack in skill sets or what processes you don't understand, but where do you want to be three years down the road? And if you start to really map out what three years down the road looks like in five years and then short term one year and figure out how you measure success, that really starts you in kind of taking that first journey transformation step, if you will, uh, which is ultimately prioritizing the work you want to do versus the shiniest object or the lowest hanging fruit. That might not always yield you the best results. What then you start to do is start to take a look at your inventory processes. And that's where you should start as your, kind of your first step is you have your strategy, you know where you want to go, what the outcome is. And now you take a look at what are all the internal business processes across your value chain that will get you to where you want to go? And that's where the real trick with transformation starts. The, the thing that we've seen in the market and the, the kind of the gotcha, if you will, is that most folks just take existing processes and figure out, hey, there's new technology, we can just start to put it on a solution. Yeah. That doesn't work because you don't know the process of what you're trying to transform and you're not even looking at it. And more importantly, it's something I know you're passionate about is the people side. You haven't even thought about the impact to your people, both internally, externally, and how that whole organization is going to function in this new world. Buying a product off the shelf usually is a hard thing to do because what it ends up doing is you're trying to take which, what is proprietary to you and trying to plug it into a box and then customize it. And anytime you start to get in that world, you're, you're adding a whole different set of costs, mm -hmm. et cetera. Why not have your own blank canvas and take your process and build it on there? Most of your processes are probably fixable without any new solution. It's just a matter of looking at what people do on a day-to-day -day basis. And most organizations don't spend the, the time or put in the effort to do that. Because most organizations and most executives are hand juggling 50 different things at the same time. And it's really hard to try to convince them to take a step back and really have an in-depth discussion and an observation of a process and try to really think through it. But once you start to look into your process, once you start to optimize your process, you now have a really good use case for a technology discussion, a people discussion, and a data discussion. Mm -hmm. But until you really have a process sort of mapped out, optimized for what you want and how you want to measure based on the strategy, you really shouldn't jump into that next layer of, is my workforce ready for this? Or do we have the right data? And ultimately, what is the technology solution that we're going to use? Yeah. Well, so I want to go back. I want to think about, you know, I think it's easy for us as consultants or unconsultants at, you know, a 20,000 foot level to say, these are the things that you need to do, you know, executive person or manager person, you know, but I think about being in that role, which I know we've been in, all of these things coming at you, you said it yourself, juggling 50 different things. I just want to implement the easy solution. Maybe it's, you know, my technology is at end of life and I just need to go to the next version or, you know, th I, this thing does seven of the 14 things that I want it to do. So that's good enough for now because I got to get it going and get it going. So 
what kind of advice do you have for people to kind of step back and, you know, do you have any experience when you were in that seat, yeah. right? Like what, what did you experience when you were trying to get those things pushed in and, and the difference between doing that and stepping back and actually being thoughtful and planful about what that looks like? Yeah, I'm guilty as charged. I actually was that same business uh, executive who was pushing everybody to get things done quickly mm -hmm. and not willing to spend time. And, it's, and this conversation needs to be split up into sort of a large enterprise discussion organization because mm -hmm. there it's a whole different politics and culture and sort of environment that folks operate in versus the middle small type businesses that are looking to transform. And so let's, let's focus on the large enterprise. The large enterprises, the directives come from above. Very rarely do you get a chance to sit and look at one process or observe one thing. So what I would recommend to folks is, as they start a new journey is to really try to push and pilot and show and demonstrate value in the new way of doing things. Potentially change a process, train a new staff member, get a new skill set for some of your folks and show value in a small sort of... Uh, organic way and let that organically grow, if you will. I learned that early on. I've, I've been known to want to boil the ocean or to, <laughs> you know, big dreams, right? But um, I've had lots of coaching and mentoring in my career to say, start small, start with a small pilot and show the success mm -hmm. and kind of build that energy at a smaller level and kind of a grassroots, which can be hard to do, I think, in larger organizations, but right. you can't even do it in is what you're saying, right? Which you did in a large organization. At the end of the day, what you're trying to show is that you have the capability to do something differently than what has been traditionally done in the large enterprise organization. That's really the biggest challenge with transformation in large organizations is trying to uh, take a new way of thinking, a new way of doing into an organization that, it, that it is a 800 pound gorilla and doesn't want to change. And, Everyone has a role and everyone has to stay in that role and mm -hmm. go forward. So transformation in a large organization is a very difficult uh, endeavor for anybody to take on. Yeah. But once you get that going, once you get the transformation started and you get people on board, we always use this analogy for folks, digital transformation in a large enterprise is pushing a boulder up a mountain. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard. And you can have as many people trying to push it up there, but that boulder is, is as heavy as it could possibly be going up there. Mm -hmm. There is a tipping point where you get to the top of the mountain and everyone understands the value of transformation, how to do business differently, how to be nimble and agile. And once that boulder falls on the other side and everyone wants it, your challenge then as an organization is trying to figure out how to slow it down. Because <laughs> just as hard as it is to get it started, it's hard to make sure that you do the right things when you scale and you grow. So that's the other side of the house is uh, enterprises that are have already started this transformation undertaking and have accomplished significant amount of good deliverables, let's say in 2019, 2018, uh, as they go into 2020, their focus needs to now shift a little bit more on the governance and the centers of excellence and making sure that the best practices are being enforced. You need to leverage your credibility to really push everyone to understand the importance of governance, the importance of building people, the importance of just understanding what your processes are, and to not have uh, you find yourself in a place in three to five years where you've made so many bad decisions, technologically or process and people-wise, that now you have this significant digital debt. You really don't want to lose control of that boulder, because if you do, in five years, you're right back to where you are. The solutions don't make sense. Your processes aren't understandable. Your people don't know how to support it, mm -hmm. and you're back to square one. It sounds like that initial roadmap, that planning, is really essential for you know people getting started, right? And then mm -hmm. for those who uh, may already be in there, if they haven't had the opportunity to sit down and do that roadmap, now might be a good time to do that to think about where they are in that process and you know how to keep it going in the right direction. There's also this, this notion that transformation requires agility and requires a transformation in the way you approach implementations. It's stuck, you know, the culture will change. The culture will change, the expectations will change, and roles will change. You know, we're, one of the transformations we're talking about now, the average tenure in this organization is 20 years. You know, so to, to go from, well, this has always worked this way, you know, the, if it's not broke, don't fix right. it, to, you know, well, we're going to do things differently and, and more efficient um, causes a big change and people get scared when there's change. Your people are inherently going to put up roadblocks. 
because they're worried about their job security. Mm -hmm. They're like, this is the way we've done it. Why are we changing? And one of the biggest mistakes that enterprises make is ignoring the fact that your people need to have new skill sets, new training, new sort of way of doing things. Right. And if you don't keep them involved through change management early right. on, through learning opportunities, what you're going to get is a lot of resistance every step of the way. So that's, that's sort of your large enterprise organization type folks. The smaller middle-sized businesses, they have a whole different problem. Mm -hmm. It's a capital conversation. Yeah. Uh, we've seen in a lot of these organizations, they're willing to invest in their people. They are nimble and they can move and they enjoy the conversations of looking at processes and all that. Yeah. They don't have old legacy systems that are completely hard to integrate with. What they're ending up with is, I know that we need this Excel spreadsheet automated. We know that this access database is not scalable. And we know our workforce is out there and they need to be mobile and they need to be able to do X, Y, and Z, right? There's all these sort of usability uh, type discussions mm -hmm. that, that, and needs that are coming up in these small and mid-sized organizations. Delivery is not an issue. It's just about capital investment that make, make, uh, make it a lot more difficult for them to transform. For those folks, I think the, the more important part is, is start small. Start kind of don't boil the ocean. Don't go in there trying to completely overhaul it, mm -hmm. but take one use case, take one scenario, build it, take another scenario, build it. And this way you're spreading the investment out over multi-year sort of plan, but what you're getting is immediate returns every six mm -hmm. to eight. Yeah. So we start with the end in mind always, no matter what size organization you are. But the approach of how you get to that end is different for a small mid-sized company than a large enterprise company. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, it sounds like the roadmap for, for anyone, really, mm -hmm. you just have to be planful about it. But the smaller companies, if it is the capital flow as an issue, then maybe they just choose one. They have to prioritize right. which one of these do we want to accomplish first to show the value, to show the worth before we go. And maybe they can only do one or two small projects a year, but at least they're moving the boulder in the right direction. I, I think that the ultimate takeaway from all this conversation is that transformation is hard no matter who you are and what, what you're trying to do. And every step of the way, it's important to take a look at where you are on that journey and make sure that you are still going down the right path. That everything aligns back to your roadmap, back to where you want. You sort of had that end in mind. And every decision you're making is focused not just on the technology, but on your people process. And ultimately, back to your strategy and, and, and where you see yourself in five, three, one year, whatever that roadmap looks like. Because you can keep investing in technology, keep doing transformation type stuff, see results and everyone can be happy about it. But are you ultimately driving towards being that company that's unique in the marketplace as a value proposition and you are ahead of your competitors in terms of uh, what, what it is that you're delivering to your customers? Mm -hmm. Build your own brand as an executive. Yeah. Don't fall into the traditional, all I need to do is this to be successful at this company. If you try to figure out your own brand, and differentiate yourself in that in the company you work with then it, it, you really end up standing out getting credibility and can take on and tackle on bigger challenges going forward versus the same old every year process mm -hmm. or same old every year deliverable and this is the way things go so I need to do the X Y and Z uh, that usually tends to get you not to be a transformative leader yeah but more of just sort of the same old leader following the same old steps. And, uh, digital transformation needs digital and transformative leaders, if you will. You know, I am all about New Year's resolutions. I look at the new year as a fresh start. I love starting, you know, start new. You can look ahead and what did I do last year? Reflect on what you did last year and how you can improve on that. And so I think, you know, this is a really cool conversation to reflect on what 2019 looked like, how we can be planful for 2020. I'd say for leaders who fear, feel overwhelmed, who don't have enough time to sit and think that they can plan these out, I think now's a good time to assess what you spend your time on and, and see where the focus should be and to make these projects successful going forward. Yeah.